So you guys want to know the top 10 guns I use in Apex Legends? We're going to go over the whole list in this video. Let's do it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel, guys. Today, we're going to be going over the top 10 guns in Apex Legends Season 5, all right? Getting into number 10, guys, is the Sentinel. The Sentinel is coming in at number 10, guys. It's the only sniper rifle on the list. I wanted to put at least one sniper in here, but out of all of them, this is the one I would choose. Now, out of these other ones, the charge rifle, I think, is just a... Uh, a small PP, you know, kind of weapon to be using in the game. It's it's relatively like not that good compared to the other ones. So uh, don't use it. <laughs> longbow. They did bring the skull piercer back, guys. I wanted to touch on these other ones real quick. They did bring the longbow or the skull piercer back for the longbow, but and with its increased fire rate, people just aren't using this gun compared to other ones. I think because of how the meta shift is, a lot of people aren't using these guns. So it kind of sucks because the longbow used to be a you know a big staple in the meta. Um, with the triple take, this gun. In my opinion just has not been popular for a very long time i did used to like it a lot guys because you could use it as both a sniper rifle and a really really good like hip fire shotgun and now with the peacekeeper as a legendary weapon the you know the the precision choke spawns way too much for this gun and really nobody is using it but let's get into number 10 the sentinel what is so great about this gun the sentinel has a 70 damage dps but the great thing here is it's it's 70 damage body shots, it's 140 to the headshot. It has a decent fire rate. The draw time is relatively slow, but or relatively fast compared to some of the other sniper rifles. And the ADS move speed is okay. It's at 36%, which isn't bad. But the great thing here about this gun is that it used to take one battery to charge this weapon. And now it doesn't. It takes two shield cells, guys. And shield cells are everywhere. So now, instead of 70, you're doing 100 damage to the body. You still have that 140 to the, to the head, of course. But look how slow that charge is. They changed it. You got, you're doing 100 damage to the body. I mean, that is just insane. Right? So once this is down, it makes it just such a really good gun, man. I mean... 140 to the head 70 and then 100 after you charge it up the gun is just a complete melter when it comes to long range in apex legends so that's number 10 the sentinel all right guys coming in at number nine is the g7 scout this gun has been in the meta for a long time now especially in season four it was one of the basic staples every team had some every team at least had two or three of these things in the game especially you know considering how long range was so important now with the meta shift and we're back on world's edge i think the g7 scout has kind of fell off just a little bit um because ranked is a you know ranked or competitive is a little bit different on that map compared to king's canyon but the g7 scout man what can i say they, they shifted it over from you know uh, a sniper to an ar the gun does an insane amount of damage i mean the gun the gun just literally melts people and there's not a whole lot you could do about it the fire rate is insanely good you know it has a dps of 136 which is just nuts it does 34 damage to the body, 68 damage to the head, or 60, I should say, 60 damage to the head. Leg shots are pretty, or 26, but the fire rate on this gun is just absolutely nuts. Like, you can just melt. This gun just does not move. You just melt people with this gun. Now, the movement speed and being able to move with this gun is a little bit difficult, but, and then this is where the gun falls off and why it's at number nine. You have the, the, uh, the double tap trigger on this gun i thought it was cool when it first came out but i think you just burn through your ammo way too quick and if somebody's moving left and right you know you're gonna it's gonna be hard to hit two shots at a time and you're just gonna burn through that ammo you're gonna want the single fire on this gun and you just burn so if somebody's moving you can just keep it going and don't have to worry about burning through all your ammo so the g7 scout is still really good in this game i'm really happy that they moved it out of the sniper rifle to uh more of an ar you know, it kind of rivals some of the other guns, but the G7 Scout is still a really good long-range weapon, guys, if you want to use it. All right, guys, coming in at number eight is the Hemlock. This gun is just insane, okay? I've been a big fan of this gun for a very long time, and it kind of fell by the wayside with the big buffs that the Scout got, you know, bringing in some of these other ARs like the Havoc and all this stuff. This gun just kind of fell off the mark. 
Now, the Hemlock is so good. It has a triple round burst, okay? It's got a DPS of 180. It does a lot of damage. I'm going to go into single fire just to showcase the damage here. 22 to the body, 44 headshot, 17 leg shot. Okay, now you can go back and forth between burst mode, which is three round burst, which just kind of eats through your ammo, or you can do single shot. But the reason this gun is so dang good and is ahead of the G7 Scout, especially in those mid-range to longer combats, is because of the single fire rate. I mean, look at this. The gun just does not move. It doesn't move. The gun is so accurate. And you can just beam people. So if you got a fast trigger finger, you can, you can just annihilate people. The max size is very good. This gun is excellent for beaming down teammates or enemies from a longer distance. The gun is just so much better, in my opinion, than to the scout. You can put it into burst for hip fire combat. Somebody gets in, you switch it to burst. You just, you just beam them. You just beam them. The hemlock is just so good, guys. I would definitely recommend using this if you're more of a mid-range to longer, you know, range kind of player. The, gu the gun on single fire just does not move. And that doesn't say that you can't take away and use it as a three-round burst at longer distances. But that jump that it has, it takes a little bit just to kind of control that recoil because of the jump. But again, it's kind of the same thing with the double trap, uh, double tap uh, attachment for the scout. So if he's moving, right, you know, like you hope with the recoil jumping that he's jumping around and moving to, so you hit all three of your shots. You would rather just single fire as the target is moving and you can just beam. All right, coming in at number seven, guys, has been one of my favorite guns since the game has ever released. It is the R301. This gun is probably, it's kind of like Bangalore, which is my favorite legend. It's just such a well-balanced gun that anybody can use. It has some of the best accuracy for an AR at any of the ranges. It has some of the easiest recoil in the game. It has 189 DPS, which is pretty good. It's some of the best in the entire AR class. You know, the, the flatline only has one more DPS at 190, which we're going to get to later. But the R301 is just a staple, well-balanced gun. It's easy to use. The recoil is very uh, easily controlled as you're shooting. It's good at all ranges. Um, the great thing about the R301 is that it's not hard to use, guys. Like, you can beam people. Now, the, the, the downside to this is, is that in a close-range battle against some of these other guns, especially the subs or whatever, you're going to end up losing unless you hit some, uh, you know, pretty dominant headshots. But the R301 is just so accurate. That's probably what sets it apart. Now, I know the Hemlock on single fire is more accurate than this, but you have the fire rate as the automatic. And out of all the automatic ARs, this one is the, is the most accurate gun. I mean, you just literally beam people with this gun. And I know, guys, that all these guns that I'm showcasing for the top 10 in Season 5, I'm going with max attachments. I just want to show you what it's like with these guns when you had them. You know, just kind of maxed out. Because in the end, that's kind of what you're going to be going for. You're not going to be playing a full game with no attachments on these guns. So the R301, well-balanced gun, especially if you're a new player. You can literally just beam people. So R301 coming in at number 7. All right, guys, coming in at number six is the Havoc. Now, this gun has been the talk of Apex for the last pretty much two seasons, like all of season four and part of season five. Season five release, they gave it one little tiny nerf, which really didn't do anything to the recoil. They nerfed it again during the split to give it even more recoil. But again, the recoil only makes it bounce up. So when you're aiming, the recoil only goes up. So if you learn to control it, right? You literally light people on fire. The Havoc has a 201 DPS. So even minus the, you know, the charge up time, this gun is just insanely good. If you can get around it, the greatest thing about this is how fast it shoots and the projectile speed as some of the highest in the, in the AR class. Now you see that little jump. I'm not the greatest at recoil control with this gun, but if you learn to control it, you literally melt people. They reduced the mag size down to 28, which I think was probably the best thing that they could do. See, you just control it, and the gun just does not move. And you literally just hold it down. So even with the charge out time, the gun is still good. Now we picked up the select fire. When you turn it into this, this gun becomes a little sniper. 60 damage to the body. And I think it does, what, 90 to the head? 
So if you're one of those players that doesn't necessarily like or want to take some of the more ARs or miss all these shots, ARs or you know the semi-automatic like the the scout or anything like that, and you want to be able to use this up close, you know, get the select fire. You're gonna be able to just beam people, and I know it's like not a lot of damage compared to other snipers, but again, if you're you know you're picking people off and you're just dinking them for damage, make them use the resources. The havoc with the select fire is not a bad choice this gun just literally beams guys it's, it used to be higher up on the list but now with the you know the meta changing and the amount of nerfs that this gun got i think it's very well balanced for where it is right now it's still a very viable gun especially competitive but i think there's going to be other guns that are going to be better that i'm going to share in this list so that's the habit guys coming in at number six all right guys speaking of ars we're staying in this category coming in at number five is the flatline this has actually became one of my more favorite guns in season five the ttk on this gun is just a little bit it's 0 0.01 faster than the r99 which which is just insane and the biggest reason for that is because of the you know the the how much damage the gun does and then the times two multiplier that's on the headshots so the flat line does 19 to the legs or 19 to the body 14 to the legs and then 38 to headshots this gun it just melts now the biggest drawback about this gun which i'll say even though i put it at number five guys is the recoil control this gun does have some of the worst recoil in the game but if you learn to control it this gun will melt almost anybody in the game another great thing about this is using the heavy ammo so it slows people down so it allows you to kind of like regain that control when you're shooting somebody to help put them away I kind of wish this gun had a barrel stabilizer attachment, but it doesn't. But the flatline still melts people in this game. It just fries. Now you can see right there is the recoil is just really tough. It kind of bounces all over the place left and right. But you can see that was 75 damage to the head. 38, 38, 38. It has the times two multiplier. It's just insane compared to some of these other guns. Now this gun is definitely more of a mid-range weapon or a close range weapon. It's a lot harder to shoot people at a at a bigger distance with this gun because of the recoil. But sometimes if you control it, you get some lucky shots. And you just melt, guys. So Flatline coming in at number five. Coming in at number four is the Prowler. I think this is my favorite gun right now in Apex Legends Season 5. The fact that the, you know, the, uh, the select fire attachment is more commonly found now. And... The, them changing this from a three round burst to a five round burst was literally genius so this gun does 15 to the body 23 to the head and what's that 24 no that's not right 12 to the legs okay now the great thing about this gun now is earlier in the seasons this gun relied heavily on having this select fire and that was because this was a three round burst now without it this weapon is a five round burst five round burst this gun will literally destroy somebody i've seen so many players use this gun just as five round burst and not even elect to pick up the select fire now and that's gonna what makes this gun great so like you're able to just use this either way either way if you want to turn it to full auto and just beam by all means do that i prefer to do that but there's sometimes where five round burst especially hip firing will just melt anybody you just it's so easy to control look hip firing the gun just does not move it doesn't move hip firing right doesn't move it has some of the easier recoil in the game it has a higher mag than a lot of the other subs which allows it to compete with other guns now when the havoc had a 32 round mag this is the gun i would want to face down one of those havoc players the recoil is much easier to control guys again it has that heavy ammo to help slow down to you know easily destroy your opponent but you can use this gun either way it's definitely one of the top guns in apex legends right now guys i would highly select using the prowler and that comes in at number four coming in at number three guys is the r99 i think this is literally the staple of apex legends when it comes to guns this is probably the the most sought after weapon in the game the reason for that is the fire rate it just melts people it has a dps of 198 has one of the highest fast uh, fire rates in the game but with that it makes it a little bit harder to control so 
But once you get it under under control, this gun will melt from almost any distance. You guys have seen this gun. All the pros use it. I use it. The gun just melts everybody with the fire rate. Now, this gun has been changed multiple times, okay? It's lost stuff in the mag. It's been lower. You know, they've increased the damage. They've lowered the damage. They've done a lot to this weapon to help balance it. And I think that's because the devs love this game so much. Like, this gun is just a staple. So the devs don't want to mess it up like some of these other guns that they've done. Or, like, nerf it, rebuff it, nerf it, rebuff it, and just keep doing that. This gun right now, I think, is probably well-balanced in the meta. It'll melt anybody. You know, there's other guns that you can lose to, you know, instead of this gun. But I think with this being the biggest staple in the game, the R99 is definitely one of the best that you can use. The biggest downfall, again, guys, I'd say is is the recoil. The recoil on the gun is can be very difficult to use, especially when you have no other attachments. So you take that off. The recoil is a lot less, is a lot harder to control. But even then... That's why I encourage you guys, you can check out my aim video that I made. You can come in here, you practice without attachments, and you just get that recoil under control. But it has the highest DPS in the game when it comes to fire rate, max width, damage at any range. The close range, this gun will just destroy anybody. And again, with that hit fire, you just eat people alive, guys. So R99 comes in at number three. Coming in at number two is the Mastiff. Okay, recently in Apex Legends Season 5, you guys know that they took the Peacekeeper and, you know, put it as a legendary weapon, as you guys can see right here, and they made the Mastiff the new staple when it comes to shotguns. Now, I'm on the fence here about this gun, but it is in the number two slot, okay? I've had a lot of times where this gun is just very inconsistent, or it seems very inconsistent, just like the piece, how the Peacekeeper used to be, but the fact of the matter is, is that this gun has a very big spread, you can literally just drop people in three shots compared to some guns like the EVA 8. That one takes a little bit longer unless you're using the double tap and then it's pretty close to being about the same. But overall damage per pellet, the massive is just better. The trick with this gun is is to, to kind of like quick scope ADS to kind of maximize that spread, tighten it up a little bit, and then you can drop somebody. The massive is just so good. The biggest thing I would say that is like tough with it is just it has really good iron sights, but you can get lost as you're moving. I mean, you can get lost with somebody, but it does have some really good iron sights for a shotgun. The damage is so powerful. I know they tuned it down a little bit, but you got 78 to the body, right? Now that's 104 to the body, 96 to the head. It does a lot more than that. The DPS is just out of this world guys like the dps on this gun is just nuts you got the massive it has 104 dps okay now if you hit all your pellet shots it's going to do 130 damage to the head and then 104 to the body 104 to the legs and that's if you're hitting all the pellets so you have to get really close to hit that spread right so if i'm super close then it does everything but if i back up at longer ranges you can see that the damage just kind of is all over the place and that's because of the pellet spread so this gun is difficult to use. I'm not a big shotgun person. I'm not very good with it. Uh, and I think that's just more of my play style. But this gun will destroy people. It's the new Peacekeeper until you get the Peacekeeper, essentially. So I think this will be a big staple when it comes to ranks, when it comes to highly competitive um, games along with the pros. You see this gun literally everywhere. So guys, Mastiff coming in at number two. All right, guys, that brings us to number one. Probably still one of the top guns, but now the best gun in Apex Legends Season 5. This gun, it's the Wingman. Okay, guys, this is a very skilled gun, okay? The damage output is probably the highest when it comes to just overall damage in the game, okay? The DPS is 117. It's a Wingman. They've changed the ammo. They literally nerfed this gun into the ground. And then they've kind of buffed it up and tried to even it out. But the gun just melts as long as you can hit, hit your shots. 45 damage to the body. 90 damage for headshots. And then you got 41 damage to legs. Now, and this is all before, what do you know? The skull piercer. Okay, with the skull piercer, with that damage to the headshots, you're doing 101 now. You're doing so much damage with this gun. Two shots and you can melt somebody. I mean, the wingman, all you have to do is hit your shots. 
with the increased mag eight shots is more than enough but there's been so many times me using this gun i'm moving around and i'm just i'm missing shots because of people's movements but this gun highest damage per output per shot it just melts everything it comes across and if you've seen players like asu master this weapon you know like you see me missing all these shots he masters this gun and he'll face some people down with r99s prowlers all this stuff at close ranges and just hit all of his shots the great thing about this gun is, is not only with the damage output with the skull piercer now it has such a beautiful sound and you can literally light people up across the map you can fight close range you can hip fire right 45 and you just melt somebody across the map and as far as ammo consumption like it you don't even burn through that much ammo because every shot just deals so much damage right even when you're shooting i'm not going to do any recoil control with this guys even when you're shooting look at that i mean there's not a whole lot of recoil to this gun so recoil control on this is very easy to use it just it's just hitting those shots if you miss those shots then you're gonna lose a lot of fights but once you hit them the damage output is just out of this world guys and you can flick you can just flick and destroy people but 101 to the head with the skull piercer you know that's just insane two shots and you melt somebody two shots and they're just dead what other gun melts at two shots the craver yes craver one shots but what other gun besides legendary will do what this gun does now even if you take the skull piercer away right because we don't want to say oh it relies heavily on the skull piercer to to drop somebody i mean you're talking about three shots and this gun's you just drop somebody three shots and they're just dead the wingman guy is coming in at number one best gun in apex legend season five it's a very skillful gun but if you learn to master it just like asu then i mean you're just gonna eliminate everybody with this gun guy all right guys that's gonna do it for my season five top 10 guns to use in apex Legends season five okay now let me know down in the comments guys what guns are top of your list what guns you would change all that good stuff let me know what your favorite gun is in apex legends or if there's any guns you would want to swap out on this list I hope this video really helped you out, guys. If it did, make sure to drop a like. That really does help out the channel, guys. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button because we bring you all the tips, tricks to improve your Apex Legends gameplay. And as for me, Warlog, I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, stay gaming. Peace.